I was hoping to have my cast off by now, but I went to the dock and they put me in another cast. So I'm going to continue working on some variations of this house. So this is the first one I made here on the left. And obviously this is the real thing here on the right. And I just wanted to go through some of the process I had of making the original. I wanted to make a medieval structure that still exists. So I wasn't basing it off of you know, someone's idea of what a medieval structure would look like. I wanted to base it on a real thing. The house was built in 1420. I'm going to show you some of the reference images I used. I wanted some views that got a good view of the roof. So I used these two for that. I think mostly this one. And I even found this model made by I don't know what company. And it wasn't particularly useful for this side, but it was useful for some of the other sides. And obviously they got some details wrong that I wanted to get right. And they did some, some things more accurately than I did, of course, also. Um, I wanted all the sides I could get. So I got a few angles on this side and this view has a decent view of the other side of the roof. And so that was useful for understanding what's going on on the back roof. And it even has an okay view of that side of the house. So you can see that the, the brickwork, or the stonework rather, really is along that edge. And then it's kind of plastered over the rest on that side. There's also this model that's inside the house. And the nice thing about this is you've got a view of the back side of the house, this side here, in this view. And and that's what I based my back view on was this uh was this these couple pictures from the model. And I also got views from Google Maps just for mostly for verification stuff like that so this side of the house the only references i could find were this model and then google maps images google earth rather to process my reference image i would bring it into affinity photo Select the image, go to Perspective Tool, select the source, and I would try to line up my source. I like to do the show grid. I would try to line up my source with the grid of my image. And that seems about right. And then for the destination, let's do a split view. And there you can see the perspective has been removed. So it's more like we're looking at it straight on. Now, obviously this messes with some things if they're not in the same plane as what you were using to set it up. So this part of the roof doesn't look centered anymore. It doesn't look centered above this window. So you have to think about that when you are setting it up. Now, the other thing you need to consider is what's the true aspect ratio of your building. So I'm going to apply that. And you can see this. I could, I don't know exactly how this building, the dimensions of this building. So that's something you have to get from the just learning how big your building is, which I did my measuring using Google Earth because that was the only measurements I could get for this. And 
and um, I did a bunch of front views to kind of corroborate what I did here. I did all of these back views and side views. And once I've done all of that, I take these images and I bring them into Affinity Designer. So here's an example of what I did in Affinity Designer. I got all my perspectives and I've traced over everything. And yeah, you use different colors for different tools that I'm going to use on my Silhouette Cameo. So the blues are for a marker and the reds are for a cutter. And... Uh, I just kind of butt up every view together. The roofs, you have to really think about the correct measurements for these. So this distance here needs to match this distance here. And this distance here needs to match. Well, this distance here needs to match this distance here. And I've added tabs where I could for attaching things together. I'm just using the offset tool to get the contour above these windows. And then I just need the top of them. So that way I can split them up into individual bricks that will go above them. And I offset it by half a millimeter because during my testing I found that a millimeter is about the width of my embossing powder once I cooked it. I've got the first piece I'm going to cut to test out how this all works together set up on my Silhouette Studio. This is the piece of the same piece of cardstock I used for the first house I did. And I'm going to use this low tack mat because it was less likely to damage the paper as I take it off. Tack down this sheet of paper. I'm going to tack it down this way. I'm going to use my bone folder to get it, make sure it's on there nice and good. Then I'm going to come over to my program, set up my page to be. 11 by eight and a half. So I can see it's going to cut down to about the two and a half mark, which is going to be here. So I've got plenty of paper here. So this will work fine the way I have this set up. I've got all these different color lines. The yellow is basically invisible, but that's okay. Uh, the yellow is the stonework. That's going to be the last thing I do. The first thing I'm going to do is the blue lines, which will be in this marker. I've got this pen holder tool. I'm going to use the same pen holder tool for the marker, and then later for the embossing pen. So first is the marker, then I trade out this tool for this cutting tool, and I cut the red lines, and then I switch out for the the embossing pen with this tool again and do the yellow lines and you can set that up here on line so the black lines don't 
we don't want to do anything with. Those are just reference lines. And the green lines, we don't want to do anything with. Those are also reference lines. So first, I'm just doing the blue. I'm going to get this loaded into the silhouette. I've got it loaded into my silhouette cutter. I've got the blue selected. It's on my pen tool. Um, let's take the force down a bit. Try that. And send. So I need to make sure not to jostle this paper. Because I need the alignment between the different tools to stay the same. I've had issues with that in the past. Now, I take out the pen, switch it for my blade, then I do the red lines, let's cut, let's do two passes, and send. It automatically adjusts itself. Hopefully the alignment is good. And I'm going to get the other pen set up while I wait for that. So I've got my embossing pen set up. And put the lid back on my marker. I wanted to do the embossing pen last because if I do it last, it won't have time to dry. And also, I, I won't get whatever, I think it's some sort of adhesive, onto my cutting blade. Put the embossing pin in. Make sure I'm doing the yellow lines. I want the force on this pin to just be one. And that looks good. Let's send it. The alignment looks pretty good. Got my picking tool here to help me unstick it from the mat. That on to protect the stickiness. Got my waste paper here. Let me get a little brush to brush away any excess. Did not stick. Maybe I was too slow. Got another sheet of waste paper here. Well, um, I'm just going to activate it and see what the result is. Maybe I just need to be faster about that uh, the picking process. Worked so well on my small scale. Smaller. <laughs> small scale for this smaller scale test the parts where it stuck well look really good i wonder if those were the last parts to be drawn i didn't see what order it drew everything in let's fold it and see what we got yeah it sucks um not a usable piece, in my opinion. The alignment's pretty good between all the tools. I can see there's a bit of bleed over here onto the wood that I was hoping my placement of the lines would avoid. I'll try another one off camera. Same exact process, but not having to wrangle everything and see how that goes. I tried a few more times and I'm not really happy with the results I got. This one I tried touching up by hand. I got this new glue pen and it worked pretty good with the embossing powder as well. 
So I want to try it, but unfortunately it doesn't fit into my silhouette right now. Unfortunately, I need to get a new pen holder for my silhouette. And I have a buddy of mine 3D printing it, so we'll see how that goes. So I'm setting this project aside, and I'll be working on something else. I just need to remind myself I'm not making these videos to be project videos like most art YouTubers. I'm just kind of tracking what I'm doing. So if a project doesn't turn out, that's no big deal. I'll just come back to it later when I'm ready. See you in the next one.